class, let's start with looking at the digestive system. The first thing we can look at, if we go all the way up, is the esophagus. And we go from the oral cavity down to the oral pharynx and into the esophagus. It's going to go all the way down until it pierces the diaphragm and goes into the stomach. For this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just remove a few ribs, just like so. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide part of the liver for now. So we're just going to fade it away so we can see a little bit through the liver. All right, so if we look at the stomach itself, just zoom in, we can see where the esophagus meets the stomach is an area called the gastroesophageal uh, sphincter, sometimes called the cardiac sphincter, which is right in this little area right there. Um, if you have acid reflux, that's where your digestive juices go up through the cardiac sphincter and sometimes cause heartburn. That's the reason why it's called the cardiac sphincter because it mimics heartburn. However, the real name is the gastroesophageal. The area next to that is the cardiac area, uh, the cardiac region, and we have this area in that cardiac region called the fundus, which is at the top of the stomach and it can contain uh, gastric air uh, or an air bubble. Uh, we look at the stomach itself, if we go inside the stomach, we have these rough uh, linings inside called the rugae. And if we look inside the rugae, we have gastric pits. Inside those gastric pits, we're gonna have chief cells and parietal cells. The parietal cells are gonna manufacture hydrochloric acid and the chief cells are gonna manufacture pepsinogen. Pepsinogen plus hydrochloric acid gives you pepsin and pepsin helps break down the polypeptide bonds that hold your amino acids together within proteins. So protein digestion occurs in the stomach with the stomach acids. If we go over here, we can see that the stomach, removing this part here of the greater omentum, the greater omentum distends down from the greater curvature of the stomach, and we also can see the lesser curvature of the stomach, which has the lesser omentum attached to it going to the liver. So let's go ahead and hide the lesser omentum. And again, looking at the intestines itself, we can see that the greater omentum covers the majority of the front of the abdominal pelvic cavity. So let's go ahead and expose and get rid of that. Now we can see the more the small intestines and the large intestines. Going back to the stomach, the part of the stomach that has the digestive juices leaving the stomach into the small intestine uh, is an area called the pyloric valve or the pyloric sphincter. And this area is very acidic once it gets into the stomach, uh, out of the stomach, so that we don't burn our first part of our small intestine right here. Our pancreas is going to manufacture bicarbonate, which is going to neutralize the acidity in the stomach, the acid, um, acidity from the stomach. And again, the contents of the stomach at this point is called chyme. If we remove the stomach itself as a whole, we can see that behind the stomach, we have the pancreas. So the pancreas has different parts to it, and it goes into the small intestines at what's called the sphincter of Odi, or the hepatopancreatic sphincter. Again, with the liver faded away partly, we can see the right and left hepatic ducts, the common hepatic duct. This right here is the gallbladder, and the gallbladder stores the bile that the liver produces. The bile is, new, may, is used to break down fats, not by digesting them, but by making big fat globulates into small fat globulates. They call that emulsification. Emulsification. Over here, we can see our common bile duct. And if we go ahead and remove this part of the liver itself, we can see uh, the cystic duct is going to be right there, uh, the common hepatic duct, and the right and left hepatic duct that feed that. Uh, inside the pancreas, we would have the pancreatic duct, uh, and the, the um, common bile duct is actually going to feed into the pancreatic duct. If we look at the large intestine, the large intestine almost forms a picture frame. It starts off with an area here called the cecum, and it goes up as the transverse colon. I'm sorry, it goes up as the ascending colon, it goes across as the transverse colon, and it comes down as the descending colon. And then over here we have our sigmoid colon, and then we have the rectum, and then the anus. Uh, the anus is going to have two sphincters, an internal and external anal sphincter. The internal anal sphincter is going to be smooth muscle, and the external anal sphincter is going to be uh, skeletal muscle. If we look over here, we have this little muscle called uh, the, the, uh, the tinea coli. Uh, this is an area of um, muscle that goes around the large intestine. And if we remove this itself, we can actually see the first part of the small intestine called the duodenum. The next part is going to be the jejunum, and the last part is going to be the ileum. 
There was actually a valve between the ilium and the cecum called the ileocecal valve, and this is located in your lower right quadrant. If we go below the cecum, we have this little tiny guy right here called the appendix. So the appendix is located on the lower right quadrant just below the uh, cecum. And pretty much this is the digestive system from top to bottom. Thank you very much.